Hi everyone, my name is Kiran. Welcome back to Cloud Parashala channel. And uh, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and click on bell icon. Whenever new video in my channel, you will get the notification. And uh, coming to today topic is um, how to optimize um, serverless compute resources. Uh, the tips uh, we are going to learn on this uh, video. I hope you get more idea um, like, uh, like uh, serverless compute means logic app and function app, like it will come more. So how to you know optimize those uh, like uh, when we are going to run any jobs in logic app or function app, how to optimize it, how to quickly run the job and finish it and um, latency related or optimization related, we'll try to understand here. Okay, and let's jump into the topic. I'm going with the logic app. It's already deployed. And uh, it's one of the logic app using that. I'm showing the options. We'll try to understand. This is a one of my logic app. In this logic app, if I go to the configuration and uh, we can see here, one of the option, let's wait for, because of it's a loading. Yes, now it's showing that workflow runtime settings. What exactly it's stating that? That workflow runtime, what exactly is stating that? Here we will try to understand that point. So here, uh, if it is a runtime scale monitoring, this is a one as we used HTTP trigger for logic app. This feature is not required. If you are using HTTP trigger, especially I'm talking about HTTP trigger guys. This feature, whenever uh, like, you know, uh, if you are using HTTP trigger, don't use this feature. Try to turn off it. Why? Because of this feature is not required when it's consuming CPU and memory more. Okay. so. It will try to, whenever you off this one, it will free up the CPU and memory for your workers. Backend, it's a compute workers. We can call that workers is a free up the CPU and memory. That's the reason, especially this is a one when we are using HTTP trigger. HTTP trigger, if we are using and don't use this option so that we can minimize the that one. So how can I know? If you see Microsoft given the documentation also here, enable the setting, allow your app to be triggered by resources VNet or by consume triggers. It required at least one pre-warned instance to be active. Click on learn more and uh, you can see documentation. They will clearly stating that enable the monitoring of virtual network triggers may have impact on the performance of your application through thought this Im impact is like to be very small. So generally this one option when we should use it, non HTTP triggers, especially non HTTP triggers and virtual network triggers we can call non HTTP triggers means that is a virtual network triggers wise we can use it. So at that time, it's a useful. Normally, it's a HTTP triggers wise, it's not required. And the second option, and if I'm click on general setting under that, and there is an option called always on. It's a by default is a turn off. This is a by default turn off. So what exactly here? It's a required recommendation is a turn on. Why is a turn on? Because of it prevent your app being ideal out due to inactivity. That means last 20 minutes, there is no job running in my logic app or function app. Automatically, backend instance is going to ideal. Automatically, it's an inactive state. Whenever new job is a trying to trigger, it will take some time to activate the resources in the backend and perform the job. So that means it will take latency. So that's a recommended wise. Try to use the always on, turn on, always on, turn on, so that it won't go ideally. And it's automatically whenever new job, uh, after 20 minutes also, immediately it will, you know, uh, without latency, it will work, guys. 
without latency it will work that's the reason and the third thing uh, suppose uh, we are using the normally it's a uh, organizations uh, will integrate the networking because of in the networking part virtual network integration so here outbound traffic configuration so inbound wise it's a private endpoint outbound wise vnet configuration will do it so this vnet configuration especially you know lot of you know people will do slash 28 that's subnet range use the slash 28 but instead of that one go with the slash 26 or 27 why because of when logic app tries to use catched http failing due to the small subnet size that is a observation i am saying that failing due to the small subnet size so it will avoid the futures uh, sorry not futures it's the failures related to the https triggers related especially it will avoid the failures related https okay so that's the reason recommended to use slash 26 or slash 27 at least is a slash 27 not slash 28 okay and another point generally uh, workflows uh, we are going to create a workflow yes that for workflow generally we'll use uh, some python or powershell or something like uh, sorry python or any other cool language c++ or c sharp or something else if it is uh, trying to use it recommendation is uh, generally for optimization depends on that is a job to job guys it's not always for recommended to for all the type of thing here i am saying that so in your code definitely the variables should be there that variables generally uh, sequence order it's the initialization generally most of the time sequential order initialization instead of that one try to use parallel initialization that variables should be parallel initialization due to that what will happen automatically it will reduce the time to initialization of the sequence order it will take time but parallel initialization due to that it will reduce the thing and automatically parallel jobs will happen yes sometimes it depends on your job guys up to your job due to uh, you know how that code and write it and depends on the requirement and everything okay so here try to use the if you have multiple uh, variables and initialization and uh, that variables to some other job and everything like that and try to use the parallel initialization so that you can reduce the time and uh, reduce the latency of your job uh, obviously it will you know reduce the things that's the reason and last but not least generally it's a logic app or function app uh, there are different plans we know consumption plan and the standard are premium and if it is a standard or premium and if you are using app service plan backend will use the app service plan this app service plan uh, what i am saying here uh, you can see here one minimum app service plan generally most of the people will take it for reducing the cost wise uh, workflow standard ws1 and it's a 210 cpu vcpu uh, that means it's a you know that one one cpu that is a vcpu and um, memory is uh, this one and this much cost like that but same app service plan integrate the multiple logic app or function app like that yes so that what will happen automatically that you know uh, that pipeline at a time is running and uh, you know that sufficient resources it's not available due to that will get the latency or performance issues for minimizing that one so better go with the next level of plan and obviously we'll get the more cpus and more memory and everything and you can reduce the performance issues we can reduce the performance issues so i hope you like this video if you like and please like and comment below if you know very uh, you know other tips or tricks anything on this please comment below so that we can learn on that and try to optimize the serverless compute related uh, things guys thank you and we'll meet next video.